Hey guys, today I have a book diary and this one is for Batman Nightwalker by Marie Lou. This is the second book I'm reading for Book Chubathon, so this is going to be a quick book diary because I want to read this in a day and I only realised this morning that this is the 2018 release. So far I'm just in chapter one. Somebody has got arrested, I don't know who it is but it reminds me of Catwoman but I really don't know. I haven't looked at the synopsis before I've started reading this. Also, I feel like I should preface this by saying I've essentially bought this collection of books. One, because of these really pretty editions, and two, because Sarah J Maas is writing the Catwoman one. So I don't know anything about Batman. I've seen two of the Dark Knight films, and I'm not a massive superhero person. I've also seen some of the 90s Batman films with Arnold Schwarzenegger as Iceman and like the Poison Ivy one. But as for like comic Batman, Batman? <laughs> As for comic Batman and actually knowing anything about the core storyline and the character, I know nothing. So I'm going into this pretty much blind. But I'm going to go and read because Ariel Bissette is doing some reading sprints and I'm having fun with those. Also, please be aware that this will be spoilery. It will be a reaction based reading vlog type thing. So if you haven't read this book, then you may not want to watch this video. So I'm now 34 pages into Batman. And I've got to say, I'm not really feeling it. The good point that I would say for it is that it feels like Batman. Like it feels like Gotham City. It feels superhero-esque. And that's why I don't like it because I don't like superheroes. It's very action packed. There's been like a car chase. I don't like action films, which is probably another reason why I don't like superheroes. But the setting is moving to Arkham Asylum. Bruce has to do community service there. So I wonder if I'll like it more then. Because while I don't really like Batman, I do like The Dark Knight because it has like that dark feel to it. I do love Batman's superheroes, like my, not superheroes, villains. My favourite villains are Poison Ivy, Harley Quinn and the Joker. So I really, really love Batman's villains. So I'm thinking I might start to like it more soon. It is Booktubeathon right now, it's day two. I want to get this finished tonight so I've got a lot to go but it is only 250 pages. I hope I'll start to like it more. It's like a real struggle for me to concentrate on it at the minute. I don't know whether that's because I'm just generally reading so much or it is just because I'm feeling it. I'm sad that I'm not feeling it as well because this is a book that I wanted to like fly through and be absorbed in but we'll see how it goes and I'll update you throughout the night. Okay, so I'm guessing that this girl who was like sat in the asylum turning the flower into a scorpion, I'm guessing that she's the girl that was arrested in the first chapter that I thought was Catwoman for some random reason, even though afterwards I realised that was stupid because Sarah J Maas is writing about Catwoman so it would be weird. They were both in the same book. Intriguing. I do really appreciate the references to Superman in this book because I watched Smallville when I was younger, so I do like that. Although I'm pretty sure, no, I'm not pretty sure. I'm not sure about anything to do with superheroes, so ignore, ignore me. So it's getting a little bit dark in here now. I'm on page 101. Ironically, I've started to get into it now that he's talking with Madeline because she really intrigued me. Like I said before, I like the villains. Also, can we talk about how I um, put my Marvel pajamas on? strategically because I'm reading a superhero book although it wasn't strategic because I didn't realize until afterwards and the only reason I'm wearing them is because I forgot to wash my Lion King pajamas. I really enjoy her. She's very sly and intriguing. She's very calculated and cold as well and I'm really intrigued about her character but like I said before I love the villains of Batman not so much Batman himself. I feel like she's actually not going to be a bad guy though. She's going to be like another vigilante type character and a love interest for Bruce so we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna watch one or two episodes of Pretty Little Liars and then dive right back in. Okay so I'm now on page 127 of this and there are a lot of things that I find un unbelievable. The first one is that a very stern very professional detective would hire an 18 year old boy or allow an 18 year old boy to look at very sensitive details on a case when he's not 
in law enforcement. So like the, the fact that she would like recruit him at all, I find unbelievable. I also find it unbelievable that she would let him go down there without a wire and then not ask him what has been said when he's talking to somebody who's in like high security prison. And also that there is no surveillance footage with audio in a high intensity section of Arkham Asylum. I'm just finding it hard to process that right now. This book just gets more and more unbelievable the more that I read it. Okay, so I finished Batman by Marie Lu. I gave it three stars because I didn't think it was fair to give it any less than that when the main things that I didn't like about it were the action-packed scenes on the superhero stuff, which is obvious that this book is going to contain. It's quite a short book. Towards the end, it really picked up a bit, but only in the last like 60 or so pages. I found it a lot easier to read when I hit that point. I did like the references to Batman stuff that I knew, like I know who Harvey Dent is. And obviously I picked up on the Superman references. I can't tell you whether it's a good representative of the canon of the Batman world because I'm not really all that familiar with Batman at all. I would say you will enjoy it a lot more if you like superheroes and you like Batman than I did. However, it's an okay self-contained story. Like I said, it contains a lot of things that I don't like in general, but that doesn't necessarily make it a bad book. I really liked Madeline. Madeline's pretty much the only thing that kept me reading. She's very intriguing. She's extremely intelligent. She's sneaky. She's morally grey. I loved that there was no romance as a forefront to this book and that it was more about justice and right and wrong and her being a villain and generally like manipulating people. That's pretty much all I have to say. I didn't love it unfortunately but that doesn't mean that you won't. So thank you for joining me for this book diary. I hope you have enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one which I think is going to be The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Please let me know if you have read this book which I assume you have if you're watching this. Let me know what you thought about it because I know it doesn't have a great rating on Goodreads. It's on like 3.75 or something like that. So let me know your thoughts and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate. You say you're a go when nobody knows. With guns hidden under our petticoats. We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no.